Hi everyone. My name is JC and I'm one of your pastors. I'd like to welcome you sa fourth week ng series natin A New Hope. And this is a continuation ng po sa pinag-usapan natin last week. And last week sobrang significant po nung time niyon because we talked about what happened during the day of Pentecost. How the Holy Spirit came, how it filled the people, and how it really changed and birthed um, the early church or the work of the early church back then. Yung topic po natin ngayon is a continuation of that. Pag-uusapan po natin is Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. And titignan po natin how, how we can learn from a beggar, how we can learn from the life of Peter and John, and at the same time how God intervened in the life of this beggar. So as we begin our preaching today, close your eyes and bow our heads. Let's just pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you, God, because your, your word, it has power and it brings life to us. I pray that you would anoint the preaching of the, uh, uh, preaching and the teaching of your word today, Holy Spirit. Would you touch our hearts? Would you, would you speak to us? Would you change us from glory to glory so that we could continually honor you in everything that we do? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, ang gagawin po natin ngayon is um, as we look at Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 10, um, I broke down the preaching into three segments. Parang tatlong perspective po yung titignan natin. And, uh, and what we can learn from those three different perspectives. Number one is yung angulo po dun sa buhay ng beggar. And yung pag-uusapan po natin is really how, how from a place of brokenness, God brought this man to a place of worship. So yun yung isa natin pag-uusapan. And at the same time, we'll look at the life of Peter and John how they were going through their normal routines of life, and eventually God redirected them, or God brought them to this man, and ginamit talaga sila ni Lord in terms of bringing healing in the life of this lame beggar. And lastly, titignan natin how God intervened in the life of this man, and how it totally changed um, his life. So our main message today would really center around this thought, that God could, could bring you to a place of brokenness and bring you to a place of worship. And as you look at that thought, you would realize na, okay, there are times in your life or there are times in our lives that we really feel broken. Many of us today, we feel that we are in need or in lack or there is a sense of helplessness that we're in today. So, yan po yung pag-uusapan natin, how God brings us from this broken place and He leads us to a place where we could enjoy His presence and at the same time, worship Him for who He is. So as we start this message, let's look at the perspective or what at least what we can learn from the life and the story of this lame beggar. Now the Bible tells us it's clear in Acts chapter 3 that this man was um, lame from birth. Pinanganak pa lang siya, ganito na yung condition niya. And I was thinking about that. When you look at this man's life, um, from the very moment he 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 came, um, growing up, probably during his childhood years, his teenage years, I'm sure he really felt helpless. And when you look at his condition, talagang pagpanganak pa lang, lame na siya, he couldn't move, he couldn't walk properly. And all throughout his life, that was that was his condition. And we find him in the story in Acts chapter 3. Sabi sa Bible, may mga tao daw na nagbubuhat sa kanya, tapos nilalagay siya sa harap ng temple, dun sa may gate. And then the, the, the name of the gate is called Beautiful. Yun yung title, or at least yun yung, yun yung pangalan ng gate. So sabi sa Bible, may mga tao na nagbubuhat sa kanya, dinadala siya doon. And every day, he would seek for money, he would seek for alms, he would seek for help from people that goes inside the temple. Yun yung kondisyon ng, mga, nung, nung, nung lame beggar. Imagine this, he couldn't move, he's paralyzed, and at the same time, wala siyang pera talaga. And when you look at his, when you look at his condition, there's really brokenness. There's really a sense of emptiness. There's really a sense of um, lack, there's a sense of helplessness um, in his life. And probably you're watching this message, or you're watching this preaching, you may not be a lame beggar. Hindi ka naman parang equally, 100% just like this man. You have food to eat, you're with your family, you have work, but there is something in you that you feel broken, you feel helpless, you feel that there is lack and you try to find help in people, with your family, but 
there are times that it's not just enough. Di ba, minsan nangihingi ka ng tulong, you, you're seeking for help, you're seeking for guidance, and when people help you, there is a sense na parang may kulang. And when you look at this man, every day he will be outside the temple. Imagine this for a moment, ha? He was outside the temple, he couldn't get in, he's not allowed to go inside. So, kumbaga, he, there is a sense that I am near the presence of God, but yet I feel so far. And maybe you're, you're, you're watching this, ganun din yung pakiramdam mo. Probably you are um, joining our online service or you've been joining our physical service. And there is a sense that you feel that you are near, but in a sense, parang anlayo mo. And my prayer is that as you go through your life, as you walk in, walk in the path that God has for you, my prayer is that hindi ka parang magiging yung beggar. Na in a sense, ang lapit mo kay God, but you feel like ang layo mo sa Kanya. And my prayer is that every single day, you would find yourself enjoying in the presence of God. Amen? But when you look at this man, he was broken, he was helpless, he was in need, and he was in lack. And sometimes we feel that way. We feel that we're in that same broken situation. But you know what's the good thing about every broken situation? That in every broken situation, there is a God who is willing to perform miracles in front of our very eyes. Kasi sa totoo lang, without a problem, there will be no miracle. Without a challenge or without an impossibility, there will no need for God to intervene. Amen? That's why every problem that we face today or every challenge that we face today or every brokenness that we are experiencing, it's really an opportunity for God to perform miracles right before our very eyes. And my prayer and my desire is that makikita mo yon, may experience mo yon, as God will continually unfold His plans, His, His, um, His destiny for you, his direction for you, little by little, makikita mo. Magliliwanag yan, kapatid. Yun yung desire ko para sa ating lahat. Na in every broken situation, in every situation that we're experiencing lack, in every situation that we feel that we're helpless, it's really God's opportunity. It's God's opportunity to perform miracles right before our very eyes. Now, sino dito you are excited? for God to really move in your life today. And maybe you are in that situation right now. You feel helpless. You feel that nobody could help you right now. My prayer is that mararamdaman mo yung tulong. Yung tulong na nanggagaling sa Panginoon. And listen to this. When God helps you, He will help you completely. Amen? So yun po yung pwede natin matutunan sa mga, sa, dun sa, sa, sa lame beggar. Yes, he was in that broken situation. But it's just a matter of time that he will experience his miracle. It was just a matter of time that he will experience his breakthrough. And I feel like in the same way for all of you right now, the miracle is on its way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Kapatid, magtitiwala ka lang kay God. Titingin ka lang sa Kanya. Huwag ka nang lumayo sa presence Niya because I believe that in your brokenness right now, in your helplessness, you have a God who is mighty and powerful and He is ready to help you. Amen? Now, let's go back to the story. Now, again, yung, yung beggar ng lilimos. And what happened was, is that when he was asking um, for money, nung nangingi siya ng pera kay, kay Peter and John, uh, he was waiting expectantly. In fact, sabi sa Bible, he was um, expecting to receive something from Peter and John. And I'm sure, um, sa tagal ba naman niyang nag nanghihingi or nanlilimos doon every single day, um, may expectation na talaga na may mga tao magbibigay sa kanya. And for that time, he was expecting that Peter and John will give him something. And I like this because this is one of the most powerful stories that I have ever read in the Bible. There are many miracles that Jesus performed. But what makes this special is that you would really see the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit moving in the life of Peter and John. 
again, they were on their way to the temple, they were about to pray, and all of a sudden, dumating tong beggar na to. So, nangihingi ng pera. He was expecting something, but I like how Peter responded. Sabi ni Peter sa kanya, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I like that. Peter was honest. Sabi ni Peter, wala akong pera. Wala akong pwedeng ibigay sa'yo. Wala akong maitutulong sa'yo financially. But Peter said, kung anong meron ako, yun ang ibibigay ko sa'yo. And Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. What a powerful declaration of Peter. And you know what happened the following verse? Let me read it to you. It says in verse 7, And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. I like that response. Peter saw the man. John saw the man. You know what they did? They prayed. And then after that, they extended their hand. Tinulungan nila yung beggar. And the beggar started to stand. He started to walk. Peter was honest. Peter said, wala akong perang maibibigay sa'yo. Nangihingi ka ng pera, I can't give it to you. But what I do have, I will give it to you. He demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. And it brought immediate healing to the life of that beggar. And that's a great encouragement for us today. You know why? Because if Jesus is all you have, you have everything that you need already. If you have Jesus in your life, you have everything you need. Wala ka nang hihingin pa. We talked about that a few weeks ago. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Again, if Jesus is all you have in your life right now, we have everything that we need. And listen to this. If we have everything we need already in Christ, then we have everything to give. Dahil kasama mo na si Jesus sa buhay mo ngayon. Because Jesus is in my life right now. I have everything to give. Now, when I give the love of Christ, when I demonstrate the love of Christ to them, that's more than enough. And probably you're wondering right now, you may be in the same situation as Peter and John. You want to help, but you can't. You may not have silver or gold. You may not have enough, but you want to help. Listen, if prayer is what you can offer right now, then pray for people. The Bible tells us the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. If that is what you can offer right now, then by all means pray. Declare. Speak a prayer of healing over people right now. Speak a prayer of encouragement over people right now. May power ang prayer mo, kapatid, because God is the one working behind the scenes in terms of what you are praying for. And at the same time, you may have silver or gold. Meron kang kayang ibigay. Hindi ganun kalaki. Konti ilang. Go ahead and help out. And I'm really encouraged because the past few months, itong season natin, we experience ECQ. We experience MECQ. Right now, nasa ano tayo? GCQ. And we experience all the transitions the last few months. But what I appreciate about our church, the people is that they're always ready and willing to help. Last Tuesday during our staff meeting, Pastor RJ were giving reports and giving us updates on um, different volunteers, leaders, who are really extending help. May mga leaders po tayo and volunteers that, um, that um, raised money to help volunteers or doctors sa um, mental hospital. May outreach po tayo sa Pasig. May outreach tayo sa iba't ibang barangay sa, sa, sa Mandaluyong. People from Addition Hills are being helped out right now. And that's all because of the generosity of the people of God. Kayo yun. And I want to commend you and I want to thank you for really taking on the call and taking on that challenge. Lord, may kulang man ako. I may not have enough silver or gold, but what I do have, I can give to them. It may be as small as 50 pesos, but that 50 pesos could really go a long way. 
I'm grateful for the people who are generously giving right now. And because of that, meron po tayong mga um, grocery package na binibigay dun sa mga nasunugan ngayon. We've heard the news in addition hills, but as a church, we're ready to help. And we can help because people like you are always ready to help and give generously to the people who are in need. Silver or gold is what you have. By all means, give. And if you can help, if you can help and, and uh, if you could extend your right hand, go ahead and do so. Kung ikaw mismo yung may burden na tumulong, why not? If God leads you to help other people, why not? My point is this. Never underestimate what God can do through you. Amen? Si Lord, si Lord ang kikilos in our behalf. Ang gusto ko lang ma- maintindihan natin ngayon is that dapat ready tayo na gamitin tayo ni Lord in any way we can. Big or small. Again, never underestimate what God can do through you. Now, last um, Thursday, um, meron po tayong prayer meeting. That prayer meeting started um, during the ECQ. And for 80 plus days, 80 straight days, may mga victory group leaders po tayo, volunteers, who would constantly meet on a, on a lunchtime, 12 noon. And they would pray for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. They would pray for the nation. They would pray for Mandaluyong. They would pray for the frontliners. And constantly, they would do that. Last Thursday, that was the last day. And sobrang encouraging because there was one leader na because he was participating in that um, 12 noon prayer meeting, he felt like um, adapting that and bringing it to his own workplace. Kinausap niya yung mga boss, kinausap niya yung mga tao doon. Sinabi niya, sa church may ginagawa kami every 12 noon, we pray. Sabi niya, why not set aside 30 minutes of our time right now, dito sa company natin. And let's do that. Let's seek God, let's pray. And you know what? They started 20 people faithfully praying at 3 o'clock in their own company. And guess what? You know what happened? God made it grow. Now, there are over 100 people meeting every 3 o'clock, praying together, Christians, non-Christians, from um, yung mga, mga managers to the bosses, sila po yung mga sumasama dun. And again, the point is that if, if prayer is what you can offer, go ahead and pray. If you have silver and gold, Pray and give. And also, if you can do something, feel like God is leading you, pray that God will give you the wisdom and go and step out in faith that God will use you. Because I believe that no matter how small or how big yung step natin, you guess, guess what? Si Lord, si Lord ang kikilos para sa atin. And in the same way for that lame beggar, God intervened. And the Bible tells us, when Peter and John extended their right hand, the Bible tells us that immediately, could you say that word with me? Immediately. Right then and there, the lame beggar was able to stand. He was able to walk. He was able to leap. He was rejoicing because of the miracle that he received from God. God intervened. And let me tell you this, God healed him, not partially, but completely. And that's the good thing about who our God is. Because He can turn every situation upside down. This man was begging for money at the beginning of the story. And towards the end, anong nangyari? His legs it was strengthened. His ankles, they became strong in an instant. Completely, he was healed. Completely, he was restored. And God reversed his situation upside down. And one of the greatest realizations that I had studying this is that he was asking for money. But you know what God did? God gave him far and beyond what he was expecting. He was only expecting for alms, for money. 
something that could make him survive just for one day. Maitawid lang yung araw na yun. But let me tell you this. What he received that day is something that he will hold on, not just for that day, but for the rest of his life. And I feel like that's the same God who is working in your life right now. Si Lord, hindi siya nauubusan ng miracle. Si Lord, the same miracle-working God that we know in the Bible is the same miracle-working God in our time today. And I believe that He has enough miracles for you and I right now. And probably you are in that situation right now that you feel helpless, hopeless, wala nang pag-asa, you're about to give up. But let me encourage you with this. Just like that lame beggar who was just expecting for money. You know what God did? God gave him more beyond his expectation. That's who our God is. He would always exceed our expectations. He would always surprise us in terms of what He can do. And I know God has something. He has something in store for you right now. Maybe you are in that same gate. You feel like you're waiting for something. People have been helping you and you feel like it's not enough. But let me tell you this. You have a God who is ready to perform miracles right before your very eyes today. Amen? And what I like about this story is that when you study it, or when you read it again, towards the end of Acts, or to, towards um, the end of the story, in verse 9 or 10, what happened was, is that when he stood up, alam mo nangyari? This lame beggar entered the temple. And the Bible tells us he was rejoicing and he was praising God. That's who our God is. He brings people. He brings you and I from a place of brokenness to a place of worship. And this is a story of a man who couldn't walk begging for money. But towards the end of his life, he was rejoicing and praising God. And maybe you are in that situation right now. You feel that you are helpless, but I believe that this is just a temporary place for you. But God will bring you to a place of brokenness, to a place of worship. Amen? Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God, because you are good and you are faithful. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now who are experiencing great lack, brokenness. Lord, our greatest response is for us to worship you. Lord, hindi man namin makita nagbabago yung situation namin right now. But Lord, we choose to worship you. But Lord, we declare and we speak to every broken situation right now. To every broken person that you will make them whole just like that man from a man begging for money to a man praising God because of your intervention in his life. And Lord, we ask that you would begin to intervene in the life of every listener right now. Lord, some of them are hopeless. Some of them, God, they're exhausted. Pagod na sila magantay, God. Susuko na sila. They're about to give up. But Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak provision. We speak healing. We speak re restoration. We speak reconciliation right now. We speak, God, for the mir miracle-working God to move in their behalf right now. Just like how you intervene in the life of that man and how you use Peter and John, Lord, you will intervene in the life of every listener right now. So Lord, our response is that right now, we want to look at your power. We want to magnify how good and how faithful you are in our lives. We declare that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. That in, in, in Christ, everything is better. So Lord, as our response, let this song be our declaration.
Let this song bring praise and honor to you. And let this song be the cry of our hearts that we choose to focus on your power, to focus on what you can do, and to focus on who you are. Lord, we magnify your name in Jesus' name. We 
sing it together You are mighty, Lord Better than life We sing He is a great God He is a great God As you are and always Wonderful God Mighty in power Author of wisdom Better than life So better than life Better is one day in your courts And thousands elsewhere Thank you for your love. You are good. 